Alrighty guys, welcome to the next, yeah, the next episode about the Galliano Junk Pile. Isn't that handy? Yeah, unless you're trying to play it. Beautiful headstock. So, this thing has been one of the worst guitars. I won't belabor its story other than it came out of the Sean Mann collection and there is a, an episode up there oh by the way if you're seeing this episode there's a ton before it and if you think this thing is in bad shape now you should have seen it before now if you live in lakewood california tomorrow's city today you knew what this guitar was going to look like yesterday today yeah but for the rest of you uh, pay attention. This episode is called internal surgery. We've had neck surgery. We've had all this kind of stuff. But since we have the back off of it and we've done all that work, you see, the back is open and it gives us an opportunity to do some stuff inside the guitar like wiring, reinforcing, um, uh, doing brace work, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to take a look and show you um, how to get some of this inside work done. I will warn you, don't just take the back off of an arch top because it's easier to put a ground wire in or put the potentiometers in some of the stuff we're going to see because ultimately we've got this in pretty good shape but we're going to pay the price later when it comes to lining everything up because the longer this is apart the more everything starts to move and then it's a pain to line it back up and if it's too far out of whack then you got new cracks to deal with and all that kind of thing but that said let me quit talking here and then I'll go to the bench and drone on and on about what we're going to do over there this is a long one uh do whatever you need to do that I don't need to know about and um yeah what what was that I was thinking you might I don't know I have a premonition to pull this out I don't know You ever seen one of these? I hope so. Because if you haven't, you should get running water and not be spending too much time in the stew mat catalog. Anyway, let's get to the bench. All right, here's one of those things, like I said, that you can't always depend on me to catch every little tiny thing. So I'll film a short or something, whatever they call it, uh, along the way. So this, of course, is a Galliano Junk Pile. We did a million episodes on it. But there was that brace that was caught loose. And over time, it bouncing around and everything. The only indicator we had was this little dot right here. Come on, Chick Flick, Teal Pointer, wake up. That little dot right there had a piece of the old canvas or whatever it was uh, material here so we know it went there and so we know it sits there now the problem is when I take a clamp you can only do this if the, the back of the guitar is off but if I take a clamp like this by the time I cinch it down I'm not going to be able to reach inside of here furthermore I need to be careful because if I bottom the top of this out here and everything and start cranking down, you're going to end up cracking the sides or breaking this loose. And so I built up a couple little blocks here that are going to do the trick for me and let me show you what's important. I got the hide glue heater going on right up there. Um, even though it's starting to get hot out, I still want that hide glue to be plenty hot. We are going to put this in here with hide glue. I know everybody's saying, oh, use a uh, tight bond, etc. I'm going to use what I want because this is my guitar. Anyway, the argument might be, well, it gets so hot that the hide glue is going to cut loose before the tight bond. Negatory, I don't believe that. So, just listen to me here. The idea is, is that when you get this clamp over here and down onto here. So ideally, the clamp would fit over the top of this. I don't know clamps that do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of cigar box guitar neck 
cut off and we're going to go in about an inch and a half and we're going to make about eight of these. Now, I want to tell you something. When you are using a chop saw and you're starting to get close to here and you're trying to take your thumb right here to cut the last couple, guess what? You're going to be missing part of your thumb or this is going to kick back up and shoot right up at you and hit you in the face and cause you not to be pretty, not that you're all that pretty to begin with. Anyway, you're going to cut about eight of these. Now, you're going to do that by simply taking a square and doing that. Now, once that's done, you're going to draw a line that's founded on the center and how wide this tone bar is or this brace. You see that? Then you're going to go to your band saw and again the best thing to do is have something behind it but the blade is going to be coming at you this way and you're simply going to stand it up like this and run that band saw blade until it hits that line right there. You're going to do one here and one here and then you're going to take and make a bunch of small cuts there and what's going to happen is you're going to end up with the things that flew out of here like this. You're going to have a bunch of these like so. And then you're going to take your 10 millimeter chisel and you're just going to come in in that slot and work these loose down like this. And the more you cut them close to the line, the better that's going to be for you when you get to this point anyway. You're going to end up with this. You see that? And this fits right over that, like so. Now, if you want to, you can take, you can go to your belt sander, you can round these edges off. You can put a slight bevel on this here, knowing that this is going to be sitting like this. But then what happens is, we're going to take our hide glue, and we're going to brush some hide glue on here. And um, I've got my hide glue heated up pretty well here where it's flowing all over the place. You see that? It looks like molasses moving around in there. But then we're going to take our clamp and we're going to put, notice that I always have tape on here. You could put cork paper, adhesive cork paper, but I always put tape on here because you want to remember that the arch top guitar is kind of flat in here but starts to curve up right in this area or down depending on which side you have it and if you start clamping way into it and you get a bind going one way or the other by the way you want to have your glue needle because you're going to be injecting from the side as well once you get everything down but you're basically going to slide this up you're going to come in and slide this down. I like to get over that tail block if I can and get it close like that. And then you're going to take this thing, which just kind of looks like a coal maybe. Of course, we would have some glue in there, like so. And that fits over the top of there. And then we just take however many of our blocks we need. And then you just tighten that up. All right, let's do this in river, real time, river time, real time. Do you know Rainer Tisic? Petisic, Tisic, P T E C E K. Well, you should. I'm going to give you a link to. River of Real Time. Where is it? Right up there. Right about now. Yeah. Okay. So watch me struggle with this just as you would. But here comes the hide glue. Nice and warm. We're going to do an even band here. And we know that I have gone over this with a chisel and flattened it out. And whatever I need to do, run it to the middle or there will be an ample supply. 
and we can see where it was in the past like so all right it's come fresh out of the high glue heater okay there we go put that side down right there pop this up a little bit put that there like so and we're going to be real easy here because we don't want this moving around it's one of the things where you need 15 hands but you know if somebody's in your shed with you they're just going to bother you, right? <laughs> That's right. So we're going to get the other one here. And this is bowed up already. We're going to pop that down. Go ahead and move that down. That head block is right there. Mm -hmm. as we're tightening this down I want to do it real gentle because we don't want to hear no popping and cracking now we're going to take our glue syringe and we're just going to run just like this down the side that lays a really nice bead Slow it down a little bit. You can see whichever way is tilting. Now I fitted this pretty, pretty carefully before I started, and you can see right there that it's just injecting that in there. And if it doesn't run, that means you got a big gap somewhere, like so. When it gets uncomfortable, you just come around, come back the other. That, like so now we're going to put a special weight on here that we call granny's iron remember that one okay let's have a look take off grandma's iron put this away you don't want to watch grandma's iron you don't want to set it in the wrong place where it falls on your foot later but There we go. That worked out pretty good. And in fact, this might have worked out a little too good because it appears we have a little bit of glue set up on the block. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, perfect. Is this going anywhere? Yeah, it's like a mother-in-law to a rich son-in-law. Doesn't matter how much they hate them, they ain't going nowhere. All righty then. You social warriors, do something with that one, would you? So now, here's the next thing we need to do. Let me grab a few things here. That I should have grabbed in the first place but remember I told you we were gonna put a set of Grover Imperials on here and that they weigh quite a bit okay we're also going to use a piece of wood to give us the angle we need to pitch the headstock back we put a new fretboard with frets that are notably heavier and in this world you're dealing with a teeter-totter in which things balance and if your headstock and everything up on this end is too heavy it's got neck dive you're constantly trying to adjust hold the guitar up and dance around like I'm trying to do while well, I'm still getting accustomed to the autopsy camera now this will 
help offset mid-range because it's here. But the moral of the story is I want to add some weight onto the tail block so it balances everything off. Now I got a piece of this red heart and uh, looks pretty good, huh? Well, look at it. It's very warped. But this stuff is really heavy. Now I want to put a piece that matches the size of this tail block. And so I'm going to run this through a planer and get the warp out of it. And then try to calculate how much weight I need to offset. Especially these Grover Imperials. We discussed this in an earlier episode. But anyway, not that big of a dilemma. I have glued this thing up really well. And so I'm going to add a piece on there. So let me go plane this. All right, there we go. It took quite a bit of planing to get this down to where I need it to be. This might be good headstock material at some point, provided the neck is heavy enough. But I'm going to measure a piece of this out and mount it right here, which calls for some bandsaw and belt sander work. Okay, we're going to get this close, which means we can run this edge or this edge to here, like so. And I want to get to that spot right there, back to the belt center. Then we're going to weigh this and see how it stacks up against six of these Grover Imperials. Bingo! This little block of wood right here gives us the makeup weight for what these added over the stock turners, tuners. So now, we're going to take this hide glue that I got heated up, uh, and we're going to glue this on here and let it set up. Okay, before we glue this on, I want you to notice something. I didn't run this all the way to the bottom. I don't want this part as it swells and ages or does whatever it does because it's different than this piece of wood. I'm going to get this up off of the bottom and just a tad off the top there so it never pushes down more weight on the top or bottom than, than the original tail piece did. So um, yeah, this part's not that exciting. A little hide glue here. Yeah, that's a pretty piece of wood. And then a little bit here. Now remember, we're going to put the input jack, which is going to be a pin-end jack, through here. So there's going to be a lot more to do. But I want to make sure that this is on here good with the hide glue. And then while it's still open, we'll drill a couple pilot holes and we will ultimately screw this to there like that. Notice again the tape there. All right, while we are here and while we have the hide glue heater all heated up, guess what? We are going to put the fretboard on and get it clamped up and let it dry. And then Later on in another episode, we will work the frets on it to fine-tune those. And we'll, we will put fret markers on the side of the fretboard because we're going we're gonna to need that. Because there's no sense in like leaving a brand new fretboard without matchbooks on it, right? Besides that, this is, once we get done with this interior part here, we are going to need to actually line up the fretboard so we can take that piece of wedge that we're going to put in here and get the angle set on this neck before we glue it on. This is all going to come together quicker than you know here in a minute or days or years or whatever just depends okay there we go 
Let this tack up a little bit or it's going to try to drift all over the place. All right, welcome to the exciting world where glue has dried. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. I've taken some of our Chick Flick Teal reinforcement fabric here and I have beefed up this area a little bit more because these are, this is where our tone and volume knobs are going to go and our potentiometers are going to be. And historically, this has been an area that has been prone to cracking even before this thing was hot rotted up. So, you'll recall that we put this piece of red heart back here with hide glue. Get these clamps out of the way. Now what I want to do is because we are going to be drill a big hole in this area through here uh, to accept our pin end jack. So our out our our input from our guitar cable that runs the amp is going to come through here. And then also up in this area we're going to put on a trapeze like this thing has not seen before, which is going to mean that we are going to need a grounding wire in here, and that will all have to go all the way through both of these blocks. So what I want to do is I want to drill four holes, one up in each corner, so we can take these screws and pin this to here so it doesn't have so much dependency on the glue. So let's do that. We'll come in like so, and we want to go into about there in four spots. That red heart is very dense and hard. All right, there we go. That'll be nice and solid. And now, again, because this area has been beefed up here, this is where we're gonna put our potentiometers. We're not gonna put them in a straight line so everything cracks. You can tell there was a crack there and one there. So we're gonna keep them kind of close together. We'll take a pilot bit and drill down like so, all the way down through the cloth. And then coming for the front, we'll take a step bit and drill it carefully to the size that we need for our potentiometer, like so. Bingo. We'll go back and trim off everything we need here with a razor knife and then touch this up one more time with a little bit of hide glue. Okay, and then anything that you think is going to be a problem, there's a little swirl right here. It looks like it's starting to dry out a little bit. It curves around, it looks like it might have been a switch in the grain there where a branch came out or something, but that's starting to look like it's starting to split. It's not a, it's not a split all the way, but while we're in here, I think you all have realized this much hide glue isn't going to make the acoustic properties of this thing very good. We're just trying to keep it together and to solid up. And we're going to have a whole new set of challenges when we put the back on and, and line that up. But anywhere that you think could be a problem in the future, while you've got this open and while... It's easy to get to. And while you got your hide glue going, just round off the end here. Put it right up to there. And lay a piece of your chick flick teal reinforcing fabric. I don't care what you call it because I guarantee you the form of it is one thing, but the fashion of it is something that you have not seen before. Don't worry, I'll take a damp cloth 
and get rid of the excess here. But this will not be confused with a Stradivarius, whatever it was. There we go. Okay. Again, anywhere where you've cut the stuff, it's a lot easier to trim it back with a razor knife once the hide glue hardens up. But we're reinforced pretty well now. All right, there we have our hole for our input jack and for our ground wire. This red heart wants to break out pretty badly, but no one will ever see it. So we're good because I'm a fake luthier, right? All right, last thing we want to do is take a look at our neck because pretty soon it's going to be time to flip this thing over and figure out how we are going to take this shim here and get it set just right to give us the right angle and notice those cutouts will be for that neck mount pickup. Ooh, clean one owner. All right, guys, I think we're finally at the la last shot using the autopsy camera. Yes, up there. I'm still getting used to this angle. I can't figure out how to get uh, right over here right about now, Don. I am just completely lost. Anyway, the one thing I'm not lost about is how much progress we've made here. We started off trying to get this brace back in which we did and then we wanted to reinforce the tail piece right here mainly so we could weight it up because we're going to put some big grover imperials on it now i want you to notice that there's a wire coming out of here that is going to ground the strings and we have taken the liberty of putting the holes in that are going to match this trapeze tail piece and we're actually going to put the strap button to mount in the bottom hole of the trapeze. Also, if you look over here, this is going to be reinforced with some metal. I got some cool themed stuff coming in, but this will fit here. Um, that is reinforced on the inside as well. We used some veneer strip and then covered it up with chick flick teal. That's not too pretty, you know. Um, this guitar wasn't much to look at to begin with, and it's going to be even less than that when we're done. But I've got the potentiometers in. We reinforced the area where they're going to go, and it's going to be time in the next episode to finally get the neck back on this thing. Look at that tapered thing we built for the neck here that's going to give us the angle we want to pitch this down a little bit so we can big use this big tunematic bridge and get everything right so um, putting this neck on is going to involve um, I'm going to bolt it forget about trying to keep it uh, just glued in we're gonna to have to shim some things up here on this pocket here but the whole idea is to get this to lift up just a little bit so we can get this brace here next episode will be mainly about lining all of this up and getting that right and then once we're done it's easy money towards the end when we finally get this thing themed up again i have some metal coming that is going to go with all of this uh Italian thing. I was going to cover this in pizza, but I didn't think that number one you'd like it or um, Number two that it would be non-perishable. Oh before I forget guys I Know that you guys send me ideas I know you send me comments and I want you to know that I hear all of them um, most of them are 
okay comments and okay suggestions. So I put them in a file uh, for safekeeping and I always go back and consider them. I don't just flush away your ideas, but I've, I've got this file right here that I keep most of them in. That's right. All right, there it is. Ain't that pretty knot. Look at all the marks on the sides. We're gonna have to line this up pretty soon. Those, these two marks go together, that's right. But, here's the deal. The next part, like I said on the bench, is we're gonna put the neck back on this thing. And that's gonna mean getting the shim right, getting things to sit right, um, and lining things up. And then while the back is still off, I am going to bolt this thing through. We're going to put a T-knot right in here so the threads pull back. And we're going to get this thing where it needs to be, where it never cuts loose. I mean, I hate to take a beautiful stock, untouched guitar like this one and make a modification to it but what is all that yeah sounds like something that needs to go right here i'm getting a lot of mileage out of this this was a giveaway so i got it for free class event by the way class event anyway if you have not given me a like and subscribe do that trust me we're a couple of episodes away from having this thing finally back together and we're going to tour it around to some people I know. And yeah, it's going to be completely and utterly just amazing. Thanks for watching. And I will see you when we get the neck back on this thing finally.